the allocation by you know pension funds, life insurance um, companies, sovereign wealth funds worldwide is increasing year on year to the infrastructure asset class. And it's you know it's very simple because the um, the asset class has performed extremely well. It's given very very strong returns, and I think that's going to continue even in in a situation where you start to see potentially inflation starting to tick up, which everyone's expecting. Infrastructure is much more protected as an asset class from uh, from that. I mean, it, you know, because of the assets, they're essential for society. They often have um, the right to pass through inflation. Uh, and just because of the, the sort of the, the essential nature of the assets, um, you know, the, the assets are able to you know, price through inflation. So I think that infrastructure is, is, is well placed. And this is definitely not, you know, from our perspective, it's not a sort of top of the market uh, exercise. I mean, we needed to, uh, to, to access more capital. We've been growing extremely strongly. Just in the last two years, we've um, increased the size of our assets under management by a further 10 billion. So we now manage about 20 billion. I think that that sort of rate of growth is going to continue. And um, we just needed to access capital to be able to, to fund the growth. We've also been seeding new strategies. We've been growing geographically. So we had a very big push into North America three or four years ago. We are now uh, opening an office in Singapore. And so we needed to raise more capital. So it's not a sort of top of the market exercise. It's, um, it's really uh, just meeting our needs. I mean, and we, as I said before, um, the founders are great believers in the company and we are selling the minimum that we, we can in order to make sure there's a, a sufficient uh, free float. Mark, there's been a lot of talk about Build Back Better, and at least in the United States, we've we've seen a sizable amount of money green-lighted for infrastructure projects. Um, what do you think the timeline is before we ultimately see uh, shovels in the soil and, and perhaps companies like yours getting payback? Because I think one of the one of the challenges with infrastructure is you you use current money to get involved, but you have to wait years, sometimes decades, to actually get that money back. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, whether, if, if you listen to politicians the world over, whether it's, you know, the Biden administration in the US or EU politicians, you know, Boris Johnson in the UK, everyone is talking about infrastructure, 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 and they're talking about building more. And that it's for obvious reasons. I mean, a lot of the infrastructure is, is aging and needs replacing. There's a need for new infrastructure because of need for faster connectivity, uh, changing societal needs, urbanization, et cetera. But the, the governments who used to fund all the infrastructure just don't have the, you know, the sort of the strength of national balance sheets to be able to fund it. So it falls onto people like ourselves and, and you know, our peers. And you know, for us, we are, um, I mean, take as an example, um, one of the investments we're, we're building in the UK at the moment. I mean, we are building very rapidly a, a full fiber network to 8 million homes in the UK. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecchi and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.